up today's very important event. You know, the Mississauga Air Mills is a vibrant community. It's a multicultural, it is progressive, and it's a model sample what it means to be Canadian. And it's a sample, it's a great sample of uh, what our country represents. But the peaceful way in, way in which we all live together is not an easy way. It takes hard work. It takes open-mindedness. It takes collaboration between governments, between civil society, grassroots organization, and a, like, a Canadian like you and me. It was this building of bridges and furthering collaboration that has been the motive of our local member of parliament, Ikra Khalid. And that motive was motion M103. That has made a huge impact. That motive, that thinking, that courage to bring that motion forward, that thinking resulting a study and findings and doing something to eliminate uh, those uh, issues which will further improve our society and our, our um, passion living together. Um, you know what, it's, it's very important to, to have a representative who has first-hand experience, who knows the real issues of all Canadians, and who have a soul and who has that pain and passion to make a difference to improve the lives of our fellow Canadian. So I'm, I'm, I'm proud to say that our member of parliament, a young lady, a passionate lawyer, who really wants to make a difference in our society. You know, what we have today our older generation, they have put so much into it. Their thoughts, their, their, their efforts, their sacrifices to improve our life and to make a difference for our future generation. And I think this is continuation of the same process that our member of parliament has thought and put the motion and, you know, have some achievement, which she will explain. And I think it's a very important day. Uh, we're so proud of her achievement and making a difference in our society. I welcome our member of parliament, Ekra Khalid, to come and make an announcement. Thank you so much, Rafkat Bhai, for those kind words. I, I really appreciate it. Uh, good morning, everybody. Is it still morning? I should say yeah. good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's an honor to be standing here before you today uh, with some great news. You know, oftentimes from government, uh, we, we have to come clean, we have to be transparent, we have to be open, and we have to be willing to work together with Canadians in how we, we, we move forward as, uh, as a community, as a riding, uh, as, a, as a province and as a country. So thank you all very much for being here today and I'm delighted to share this good news with you. You know, today is a day where we can tell everyone that, that hard work really pays off and that when we stand united behind an issue, behind an objective, we will succeed. You know, in, uh, and, and I will give you a little bit of background. In 2016, 
there was an e-petition that was tabled in the House of Commons. It was e-petition 411. Uh, this petition, it garnered about 70,000 signatures. Um, and at that time, it was the biggest e-petition ever presented in the House of Commons. Um, and this petition, it was an ask. It was a call to action that all Canadians come together and they call on our government to combat an issue of Islamophobia. And, and I was astonished to see that about 70,000 people thought that this was an issue. Uh, so I decided to do some research in it. And I was astounded even more because there was so little data, not just on this issue, but on the issue of discrimination and racism as it impacts all diverse communities across Canada. So when I wanted to answer this, this call to action by these about 70,000 people, I did realize that all diverse communities in Canada, they do face these issues. Whether it's the black Canadian community or the Jewish community or the Chinese community or the Ukrainian community, so many as they've come and immigrated and called this country home, they have faced as they settle they have faced discrimination and racism. We as Canadians are open, we're accepting, but we need to continue to work on that openness and that acceptance so we can ensure that everybody who comes to settle here to call our country home can do it without fear, without feeling that they're not part of this, this wonderful place. So as a parliamentarian, uh, I felt the need that, that we do need more concrete data to reflect on this problem. And I thought, what better place to, to identify and to study this issue than, than our House of Commons, the House of the People. So on December 1st, 2016, I had the privilege of tabling Motion 103. It was a motion that built upon e-petition 411, but really expanded it to include all communities, all the, the broader issue of systemic racism and religious discrimination uh, that are faced by so many diverse communities. And to see how we can find ways to tackle the broader problem in Canada as a whole. My goal from this motion was not only to condemn hatred and discrimination in our Canada, but also to study it. Why does it happen? To understand it and to find solutions to help strengthen the ties amongst Canadians and to continue to build bridges in our, in our country. And there were so many amazing people who came together to support this cause and some of whom are here today. Based on their hard work, their promotion, their raising awareness, we were on a really good path. Our Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau, he stood firm in support. Our Minister of Canadian Heritage, the Honourable Melanie Jolie, stood shoulder to shoulder with me and with all of us as we pushed the needle toward progress. On March 2013, sorry, March 23rd, 2017, the House of Commons adopted Motion 103, which was asking for the Standing Committee on Canadian Heritage to study the issue of systemic racism and religious discrimination in Canada. The committee started their study. Hundreds of experts provided testimony and gave insights into the issue of systemic racism and religious discrimination. The, community, the committee used this feedback to draft a report with recommendations that was tabled back in the House of Commons waiting for our government to respond. And here we are today. Today, I'm glad to announce that the hard work is translating into tangible action. Our government is investing an additional $23 million into the multiculturalism program. The new program enhances the existing interaction multiculturalism funding by providing communities with more support for a broader range of celebrations and of activities. That's $23 million to fund projects and community-led activities that work towards eliminating discrimination, racism, and prejudice. That's $23 million that will fund local events that promote intercultural and interfaith understanding, as well as celebrations of a community's history and culture. 
That's $23 million that will fund projects that, that will help recipients promote diversity and inclusion by strengthening the online and social media presence of their organizations. Establishing, not done yet, establishing their communication strategies as well as enabling them to recruit and to train more volunteers. That's $23 million that will strengthen diverse communities and support anti-racism initiatives across the country to create a better Canada for all. And I say this with passion and, and with belief, knowing that every penny of this investment will better the life of someone. Someone who is neglected, who is sidelined, who is mistreated, who is having a difficult time finding a job because of, of what they look like, who f faces systemic racism, who faces discrimination, who faces stereotypes that hold them back in entering and really contributing to our economy, that makes them a target of, of hate crimes, that stops them or that has a barrier um, to, to them really giving Canada their all. And I know that of all the people that move here and, and call this place home, we all want to contribute. We all want to make sure that we give back to the beautiful country that has given us so much. And I think it's incumbent upon our government to work in a whole of government approach to work with civil society, to work with grassroots organizations and with individual Canadians to ensure that we're continuing to push that needle towards progress, that we're continuing to build those bridges. Canadians are smart. Canadians are hardworking. Canadians come from all over the world bringing talent, bringing passion, bringing diversity, bringing merit. And I think it is incumbent upon our government to just give them that foundation so they can do better and be better. We don't need support as Canadians, we need a foundation. And that is, and that is what our government is doing with this funding, with these $23 million that will go a long way towards helping organizations like the Boys and Girls Club of Peel that provide so much support to, uh, to vulnerable youth within my riding and across Peel and, and Brampton. NCCM that does a lot of data collecting on, on hate crimes um, and really pushing that advocacy needle forward within, within our country. Or like Islamic Relief uh, that does not only work within Canada, across Canada, across the world in really removing those stereotypes. And there are so many more here that are present today that, that are working so hard. And this $23 million is going to provide support to community organizations such as all of you. I want to take this opportunity and to lastly thank the residents of Mississauga Erin Mills for their support in this journey from the moment that it started until today. You've been my backbone and I am so grateful to represent you in Ottawa. Thank you very, very much for being here today and I'm happy to take your questions. Yes, sir. Uh, my question is, is this $23 million, is it uh, going to be spent over the span of next X number of years? And number two is, uh, what are, what's the criteria for organizations to, uh, to be eligible for this funding? Thank you. That is a very good question. So this funding is available as $23 million over a span of two years. Uh, so, and who is eligible to apply? Well, First Nations, uh, Canadian not-for-profit organizations and associations, non-federal, Canadian public institutions such as school boards, uh, colleges and universities, chambers of commerce, law enforcement, police agencies, crown corporations, provincial, territorial, municipal, and regional governments as well, as long as they partner with community not-for-profit organizations, private sector, again, with a partnership with not-for-profit organizations, and um, 
specific consideration, obviously, for projects that are directly dealing with, uh, with trying to eradicate and to work on issues of racism and promoting multiculturalism. Uh, that's again the same criteria. Uh, most religious organizations, in in my experience, I believe, are not for profit organizations, so they qualify under who can apply. Uh, according to Statistics of Canada, hate crime has been doubled from 2013 to 2016. Do you think that 23 million dollars is going to be good enough for the next two years to eliminate this hate crime? Uh, definitely not. Uh, that's a very good question. I think hate crimes and, and issues of systemic racism and religious discrimination have been ongoing. Many communities have faced it, uh, starting from the indigenous communities up until now the, the Muslim communities where it's a focus of a, of a target. I think what this $23 million will do is empower our grassroots, empower civil society, empower regional governments, municipal governments to come together and to create projects um, raising awareness, raising, um, raising the issue and, and really talking about it and ensuring that we are all aware, making sure that we're celebrating each other's differences. So. When we talk about eradicating hate crimes and, and hatred and, and discrimination and, and racism, it really has to be a long-term systemic approach. There is no one quick fix to this issue. It takes a lot of people, it takes a lot of coming together to educate, to raise awareness and to celebrate. It is also applied to those people. They want to work with the media. And for interfaith. So basically how it works is um, a, a, an organization, a not-for-profit organization or, or a company or, or a regional government, uh, for example, will come up with a concept of a project or have a current project that they would like funding in. And the project um, or event uh, or a community capacity building, those are the three streams, um, it really has to... to, to hit at the core objective of uh, promoting multiculturalism and uh, in ways of, uh, of eliminating racism. So for example, if, uh, if an organization uh, wanted to train volunteers uh, with respect to going out and, and speaking publicly about uh, a, a, an issue that, that involves racism and religious discrimination, for example, of, of young women and girls, um, that is something that would be eligible. So the idea is to come up with a concept, a project, and make the application to the Minister of Heritage, and, uh, and then uh, go through the application process and satisfy that, that your project does meet the, the, the criteria and the, the objective of this funding, and, uh, and then go forth and, and fulfill your project. So the Ministry of Heritage uh, is also the minister who's responsible for multiculturalism. This uh, whole uh, project and this initiative and this funding stream is uh, implemented and is administered by the Ministry of Heritage. So they are the only ones that take the application. Yes. Uh, when's the deadline for the call for, is it content notes first or is it proposals? So the call for proposals basically is an application process. Today is the day that, uh, that applications are now open where you can submit your applications. Um, out of the, they, the applications currently are on a rolling basis. There is no deadline that's, uh, that's announced as of yet. Uh, so get them, get them in quick. Yes. I want to ask you a question. The question is this one. What is a, a one criteria I understand is a non-profit non organization. But mostly people apply on a personal relationship. So those uh, certain criteria to prove the funding are just on a personal connection with the high level. Whoever have a connection, they get the funding. And whoever doing a regular <laughs> things, which is a huge function, yes, they are not is, getting yes. nothing. And people are just have a connection, they're getting a funding. That's an excellent question, uh, Wajid Sahib. Um, the objective of the funding and the objective of any government funding is to make sure that there's a greater good. So when we talk um, about funding but privately, uh, private, uh, if, if you don't mind, I'll finish my question. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um, the, the objective is to, to have that greater good for Canadian society. So in this specific funding stream, this $23 million, 
if a private organization like yourself wanted to team up with a not-for-profit organization, for example, like Islamic Relief, and wanted to come together and, and work on a project that is either um, community capacity building or um, having an event uh, such as the one that you're having uh, in, in the next few weeks, or, um, or building a project around multiculturalism or anti-racism, that is something that uh, would be considered for, for application uh, for, for this type of funding. So it has yes. to be a non-profit organization? It, has to, it, it can be a for-profit organization as long as it is partnered with a not-for-profit organization and the objective is very clear that it is for a specific cause that the funding is for, not for profit. Yes. It's good that our government is really, and it's very encouraging. My question is, it's, when you dole out that kind of money, is there a measure to, is, is there a yardstick to measure the success of the program, and how do we gauge it? Um, I really think that uh, the community organizations do phenomenal work. Uh, in, in terms of engaging, in terms of having impact at the grassroots level, um, at, the, at the countrywide level. And, um, and the success of a project is really, in my opinion, it's, uh, it's judged by the number of people that are impacted. And, uh, and, and I, I leave that to the ministry to really decide um, what, the, what the application process will be, how they will uh, judge impact, and, and how they will ensure uh, the data collection piece of, uh, of, uh, of what we're seeking here. And the reason I ask this question is because in order this, this initiative is taken, in, or, in order to either enhance it or maybe roll it back would depend on how effective, effective it's going to become. So that's the, that, was, that was the reason I asked this question. Mm -hmm. You're watching Toronto 360 TV. After the commercial break, we're coming right back. Don't go away.